A lot of ideas in the longevity sphere are now long since outdated, and they're merely parroted by certain individuals to promote their biased agendas. While it's true that mTOR activation inhibits the ability of the body to activate its repair pathways, mTOR is either on or off. If it is stimulated just a tiny amount by protein, then it turns on and you can't activate these pathways. To fully engage these healing pathways, what you really want is an extended fast. When I do eat, I prefer to fully stimulate mTOR so I can get the full benefits of muscle growth and collagen synthesis. I guess you could say that when I am on, I prefer to be more on than off. He's pretty good. Good. He's the best. It's popular to malign IGF-1 today, but most of the time this is just a thinly veiled attack on consuming meat by the usual cabal of conmen and tricksters. They will tell you that stimulating mTOR is bad because this stimulates IGF-1 and this is going to cause cancer. In reality, IGF-1 is mainly driven by insulin. Everything you eat stimulates insulin and therefore IGF-1, but when you eat food with a proper amount of healthy animal fat, this greatly blunts the insulin response. A typical meat-based diet is going to spike insulin only modest amounts, even if you do still eat some carbs. When you eat the absolutely insane low-fat, high-carb diet, which is promoted by the diabetes pyramid in America, or the bagel, donuts, and puffins rainbow in Canada, you massively spike insulin and this is incredibly unhealthy. Bodybuilders think spiking it is very important for muscle growth, but in reality it is leucine that drives muscle protein synthesis and not insulin or IGF-1. It's also important to realize that dietary protein consumption does not lead to gluconeogenesis. Your body does not simply destroy all the extra protein in the body and turn it into glucose. Gluconeogenesis is 100% driven by the cortisol levels in the body. These rise from stress, excessive exercise, a high carb diet, or a lack of fat in the diet, which is the case for some carnivores when they start out. When people have trouble on a low carb diet about 90% of the time, the issue is they're not eating enough fat, and the other 10% of the time, it's that they don't have enough salt, and there's only a few other little issues that crop up. Calorie restriction in the sense of longevity is a very extreme diet of less than 1200 calories a day. Some people do practice this due to some longevity benefits found in mouse studies, but most people could never stick to this sort of diet but not for their whole life because it's just too miserable and difficult. The high court may well sentence you to torture. While mice did receive a longevity benefit from caloric restriction, it should be taken with a grain of salt. Due to extreme mouse metabolism compared to humans, the changes we see are usually exaggerated by about 10 times. If a tumor in a mouse study shrinks by 15% from a medication, then it's a really good bet that in humans it's only going to shrink by about 5%. My guess is that longevity research will support this trend over time, and humans living 30% longer is simply not going to happen, but they might live 3% longer. That would be great if it came from a cheap supplement such as alpha-ketoglutarate or taurine, which also extend lifespan. But if you have to starve yourself forever and make yourself frail and weak, then it hardly seems worth it. Thankfully, we don't have to. It turns out that in mice with their autophagy genes knocked out, extreme calorie restriction diets do nothing at all to extend health. That means the real hero here is autophagy. While limiting calories to near starvation levels will induce some autophagy, Fasting for extended periods will produce much more. Even simply eating OMAD will introduce more autophagy in humans than a starvation diet would. 
Fasting has many, many benefits, of course, but autophagy seems to be the main one that could allow us to live longer, or at least it's the main one that allows mice to live longer. This is because it helps stop cancer and insulin resistance before they begin, and this cuts out most of the chronic diseases that take us down, mainly cancer and heart disease. And this is borne out by my studies. Mice will be assigned a fasting schedule for their entire lives, or for a large portion of their life towards the end, say half their lifespan, and they see nothing but increased longevity on average. And this is doing very extreme fast for a mouse, such as eating only every other day. And since they have a much higher metabolism, this is like fasting for three or four days for a human. This longevity comes mainly from preventing early onset cancer in mice. And these mice also look and behave like young, strong mice for much longer. So it's doing much more than simply letting them live longer. On the other hand, the extreme caloric restriction mice are tiny and frail. And while they're active, they just are not healthy in the sense that we'd think of it. The same thing applies to the so-called longevity drug of rapamycin. Rapamycin works by partially inhibiting mTOR, which slows down protein synthesis in the body. This mimics extreme caloric restriction, which will increase autophagy some. The problem is it comes at a big price. Not only does it make you more frail over time, but it also suppresses the immune system. In fact, this is the original reason it was created. It's used so that people with organ transplants won't reject their organs. You definitely would not want to take this stuff in order to try and live longer. You might not live much longer. You could likely live a lot shorter. And even if you don't, you're going to look and feel much less healthy. Keep in mind that decreasing protein synthesis also makes you look older because you won't make nearly as much collagen and elastin in the body. This is also a problem for any low glycine diet, which is most people's diet today. Most people simply don't get enough glycine, even if they're on a carnivore diet or a heavy meat-based diet, let alone if they're on a standard American pizza diet or if they're on a vegan diet where you just eat lettuce. That's because the broth from boiled bones and skin is not nearly as common in the diet today, and it's estimated we're short of the levels we ate 100 years ago by as much as 15 grams. This molecule is also needed to create glutathione, which is an antioxidant important for staving off the effects of aging, which includes damage to the skin and the collagen and elastin, which is what leads to wrinkles. You should also keep in mind that the body of a mouse is much more simple than that of a human. Mice get cancer very easily, while humans have many defenses against cancer that mice don't have, and the simple fact our cells split less often means that we're much less susceptible. In the very old who don't succumb to cancer or heart disease, it is inability to create new tissues that leads to death, especially new blood cells. This is due to stem cell exhaustion, Eventually, you just can't make enough cells to replace what you lose over time, and you just dwindle away. For humans, it's very likely that stem cells are much more important than autophagy for longevity. To truly expend life beyond the norm in humans, Stem cell exhaustion simply must be addressed somehow. Fasting does this by stimulating the Yamanaka factors to ensure that the stem cells maintain their stemness. It also increases AKG in the body, or alpha-ketoglutarate, which is very important for maintaining stem cell viability. You can also supplement alpha-ketoglutarate, and it's shown to be very helpful for life extension in rodents and perhaps more importantly for maintaining their youthful appearance because it saves the stem cells, which allows them to have youthful hair and skin. Stem cell exhaustion also leads to immunosenescence where the white blood cells lose the ability to fight off infection and cancer. Thankfully, fasting can also help with this. 
Taurine is a supplement that helps stave off stem cell exhaustion and it's shown to have similar effects on longevity in rodent studies as fasting and extreme caloric restriction diets. Most people don't get enough of this in the diet today and you can look at some of my older videos to see exactly why that is. But suffice it to say that I take 6 grams of taurine every day and for most people that's probably the simplest solution. Mitochondria are also important for aging and high insulin damages your mitochondria which splits them and blunts their ability to make ATP. This leads to senescent cells over time, cell death, and cancer. Your immune system must clean this up and that burdens the immune system even more and that makes it even harder for the body to clean up the damage of aging. Fasting lowers insulin and leads to the fusing of mitochondria, which is a mechanism where multiple mitochondria mingle their DNA together in an attempt to repair themselves. Mitochondria only have one copy of DNA instead of two, and that means they have very limited repair mechanisms. And this is the only way that they're really able to repair themselves. Fasting also leads to increased energy production in mitochondria, by releasing uncoupling proteins that tell the mitochondria to produce more waste heat. This raises your basal metabolic rate because your body uses up ATP to create this extra heat. Insulin has the opposite effect and lowers your metabolism over time, not just because it damages the mitochondria, because it puts them into a sort of holding pattern where they don't really produce all that much energy. And eventually you're metabolism just fades away. This is a large part of why we tend to gain weight as we age. Our mitochondria simply don't burn as many calories as we age, and it's really our mitochondria that are the basis of our basal metabolic rate, and not any hormone in the body such as cortisol or thyroid hormone, both of which are actually very negative because they're highly catabolic. Thankfully, some fasting and avoiding meals that excessively spike insulin can slow this process down or even reverse it. There's many pitfalls and blind alleys when it comes to living a long and healthy life, but fasting in a low-carb diet can really save the day. Long live Flash! You've saved your life! Have a nice day! Yeah!